October's blogs are live, and I loved our topic this month, sexual myths, the specific myth that got in our way or we hit up on as we were developing as young women. And there are so many. And that's what I loved about this month's blogs is each one was unique. I mean, you know, there there was some like I could relate to every single one. Mm -hmm. um, but there are just so many different myths that just get in our way. Um, so the first blog is from Bernadette, and she is our body sex leader in Holland running workshops. And she wrote her blog in Dutch. So if you want to read hers, just right click. And, and choose translate and you'll be able to read it in English. Um, hers was fantastic and something I think a lot of women will relate to. Her one-liner, from the moment I was told that a vagina smelled like fish, I started washing myself with soap. I remember hearing that. They go, oh, close your legs. Oh, I smell fish. A healthy vagina never has a strong smell. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. Now, if you have a smell like that, you have BV, you have some kind of infection. Right. But think about that as a little child hearing mm -hmm. that. And no one wants to smell. It's scary. Right, right. And that is just such a common myth that that we hear. And then it's so like shaming and embarrassing. And it's something that we always carry with us that that there's something wrong with the way we smell or taste. And I have sat in circles with thousands of women. Mm -hmm. And I've never smelled anything bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, right. Ever. Right. Like yeah. ever. Now I'm heterosexual. I've smelled some nasty balls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just think of that and have that image in your mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And, and we all smell different. Um, and, and it's wonderful and beautiful. And I find my own smell very arousing as, as I've talked about before. So, you know, it's a good thing. Our smell is a good thing. Um, next we have Lakota's and what's great about Lakota's blog. I related to it because she, she talks about, uh, Cosmopolitan magazine articles and about how to make ourselves appealing to a man in order to get the man. Like that's the whole goal is we use sexuality to get the man. So Lakota's one liner. I've realized that instead of a man's approval and happiness, the real prize in life as a woman is pleasure whenever I want for big reasons or no reason at all, but literally just because I want it. Autonomous pleasure. I love this term autonomous pleasure mm -hmm. we, because part of that is self-pleasure in our masturbation practice but mm -hmm. it's also how we perceive ourselves in an act with a partner mm -hmm. this is autonomous like it's about my pleasure think about all the time and money we spent in mm -hmm. our 20s and 30s trying to be appealing yes yes Yes. And putting the focus on the man's pleasure. And I know I did it too. I was all externally focused on their pleasure and not on mine at all. And really what a partner wants is someone who's connected to their pleasure. If yes. I had a nickel for every time a lover said, oh, you're the best. Now I know people with incredible sex skills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, And it's not that I'm the best, but I know what I like. And I'm yes. connected to my pleasure. So it's fun to be around. It's relaxing to be with that person. And you feel that connection. Right. It's more playful. Definitely. Um, yes. But I, I loved Lakota's this month. It, it was really outstanding and very relatable. Next, we have Jessica, who's our body sex coach in South Africa right now doing workshops. And her quote is, today I know the wetness of my body says absolutely nothing about my desire and is most definitely not a sign for consent. That's it. This is what trips us up when we are assaulted mm -hmm. and our body responds. Yeah. And we think, why does my body respond in that moment? The body and mind are separate in, in, in the extent that we can say no Mm -hmm. And if we're touched, we're, there's going to be a response. So if you penetrate or stimulate a vagina, it's going to lubricate. Right, right. And her, her article too, she talks about at the beginning about making out, you know, touching, kissing bodies together and how arousing that was. And then when she started having intercourse, it all goes away. It wasn't away. good sex. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't what she wanted. 
Yes. No, that's why the hottest sex right. is really in junior high. Because right. no one has any space or, or privacy or ability or birth control. And mm-hmm. so it's all heavy petting. It's all building arousal. It's all more time for us to get our erectile tissue filled with blood and we're ready to go. And then all of a mm-hmm. sudden it becomes a cold fuck. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So check out Jessica's. It's great as always. Um, Next, we have Grace Oasis, who is one of our coaches in training in Ontario. And I, I, I loved hers too. It's a great read. Her quote, I was told many times by my grandmother, I should have been a boy. I relate to this because I had an older brother. And I was the same way. I wanted to play. I wanted to climb trees. I wanted to take my shirt off. I wanted to behave the way I saw the boys behaving Mm -hmm. because it was more fun. Yes. They had more freedom. And it was always, oh, you got to close your legs when you sit down. And Mm -hmm. it was always these restrictions and limitations. And you're going to hear yourself (laughs) in this story of everything that she wanted. And I think of her, she's just, Grace is so connected to her body. Yes. Yes. And maybe that's what I always envied in boys. You could be connected to your body and you could use your body. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And so it's about gender roles, right? Masculine and feminine. I mean, girls can be physical and in their bodies too, right? (laughs) Watch the Olympics. More women got medals in this past Olympics Mm -hmm. (laughs) than men. Exactly. Exactly. Next, we have Lincoln, who was writing formerly uh, under the name Emily, um, and now she's going by Lincoln. I feel the burned women and witches in my bones still. Those who burned because they refused to hide or give in to the darkening times and lies of the church, continuing instead to live their lives openly. Yes. Betty once on an acid trip had a flashback of being burned at the stake Mm. and had a complete meltdown. And she told me, she goes, I know I was burned at the stake, burned alive. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I love that she's doing this fire ritual and that's what's coming to her. Right. You know, very often, right in our lives, you can feel this compassion and this pull to the women of yesteryear, you know, the the women that wouldn't, you know, concede. Yes. Yes. So she talks about like how to shed these myths that are so deeply ingrained inside of us. And and she shares her own rituals and process for doing that, um, which is just, it's just incredible. I, I, I love Lincoln and her whole energy and vibe. Um, she's another one of our leaders in training near Seattle. Um, Carlin, yours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Your story is just like so compelling. And I have to take the first line of your blog post because it just draw it drew me right in. You're a gay man trapped in a woman's body. <laughs> yes. I had a lover say that to me while he was pushing me off his body. Mm-hmm. Um And when I was young, I just thought like I was raised in this religious cult and then I was out on my own and it was like, let's have adventure, let's have fun. And now I'm like free. And I was always told that my libido, my desire was too much. Mm -hmm. And it was a reason it limited my ability to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Again and again. So um, it's kind of some stories from my past and me realizing that there was nothing wrong. It was the body sex circle. Right. When I saw all, all women are like this, I really thought it was me. Right, right. That that you were too much um, and you weren't too much at all and that you could be sexual and a mother and a wife and you can be you and be sexual. That's who you are. We are all sexual. Yes, yes. So it's a great read, a great permission. And I know I related and I think a lot of women will relate to that one. Well, Laura. Mm-hmm. I love yours. Uh. <laughs> now here's your one line. <laughs> there is no shame in having or not having intercourse at a certain age. And you were older when you lost your virginity. You were 31. Yes. Yes. And I felt so much shame about that. And I thought that's why I, it, it just, it made me feel diminished. Like I, I didn't have the skills for partner sex. Um, that I was older and I should have known more. And that's why I wasn't having relationships. And so I was constantly blaming myself. 
oh, that is not true. Right, because right. You have mad skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen I, them. <laughs> I know that now, you know, and, and that's the part I... Uh, I was orgasmic since the age of 13. Then you're not a virgin. I mean, so, Betty and I mm-hmm. firmly believe that if you're having orgasms, you just haven't been penetrated yet. Right. And by someone else. And solo sex is just as important and just as significant as partner sex. There isn't a hierarchy. And I would say it's more significant because it's the foundation. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, I dispelled some myths like body sex really taught me so much and helped me be more confident in myself and in my skills. Um, and there's a punchline at the end of my story <laughs> <laughs> that just kind of makes it all worth it. So, yeah. So we hope you enjoy this month's blogs. Mm-hmm.